Right in the beginning, I have to confess, I bow with pleasure to the steady critical success of this book. It is a fine quality and totally enjoyable summer reading, no doubt. At first glance, it is a traditional whodunit with a twist. An exceptionally bright and exceptionally worthy 11-year-old girl is our tour guide, or the detective, if you like. The story moves around some famous and very valuable stamps, stamp collection, respectful and less respectful shady stamp collectors, and so forth. But let's leave it as it is now. After all, we are talking about who has done it, aren't we? It is extremely hard to reinvent this genre or even just write something outstanding. There are no stories and variations of this theme that haven't been told already. So mystery writers nowadays try to let the storyline play the second fiddle and give the recital part to other ingredients. It can be the char character, features of the protagonist, the circumstances or and environment, the air of the crime, the hidden layers of the book, an extra message and so on. The best feature of Bradley's work is that other than the storyline, he managed to come up with an intriguing book in a lot of areas mentioned above. In other words, it is an enjoyable reading for those as well who do not like to read mysteries. Just to give you some hints what I mean, Bradley does an excellent and quite moving job of describing the father's deep sorrow and loneliness he feels about losing his wife whom he adored, and how these feelings and emotions determine his relationship with his three daughters. It takes a great writer to depict such a vivid and plausible character as the mother purely through the remnants of her husband and her children's memory, so much so that this long-disappeared woman becomes indeed one of the main characters of the novel. Also, there is a wonderful understory going on between Flavia, the eleven-year-old wonder, and her two sisters. Whoever has siblings will laugh and cry out loudly, recognizing the oh-so-familiar situation and dialogues. Oh, and those constant plannings of poisoning that sister of ours. Okay, just a bit, just to put something in her lipstick, so that she gets big, ugly, swollen lips for her first date of the love of her life teach, to teach them a lesson. But on the other hand, jump right in comfortingly when they are so desperate about their not-so-much piano talent. To mention some of the very few weak points of the novel, I have found quite a few illogical events, or better to describe them as why the heck do they do that other than give the author a forced reason to go on with the main storyline, the crime. Think of, for instance, Flavia and the innkeeper's daughter choosing a very elaborate way to get to a certain room in the inn so that nobody can see them. But number one, why does it have to be a secret? And mainly number two, why does the innkeeper daughter have to take Flavia to this room just to tell her that the guest harassed her? Oh yes, we are taken there because Flavia needs to find something in the room, I'm not telling you what, that is absolutely crucial for Bradley, the author, to go on with the story. Bad, bad, bad. Also, there are a bit too many cultural hints to establish the era's atmosphere, which is the 1950s England, and it is totally unnecessary, as they don't really take us back in time at all. For that matter, the era itself is something that is not important in this case. The novel could take place in our present as well, as in the, as in the 20s. However, the greatest achievement of Alan Bradley is that he created a totally plausible 11-year-old character in spite of the fact that we know for sure from the very first moment that no real 11-year-old could act and speak like Flavia, no matter how bright they are. In other words, the author managed to achieve an extremely rare trick we immediately believe whatever he wants us to believe, gladly and enthusiastically resisting our real-life experience and common sense. 
And this is a sign of a real, true talent indeed.